Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is March 19th, 1947. The title is Thunder Martin's Murder Charge, and I hope you enjoy. A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Lone Ranger and Tonto had reined up in the bottom of an arroyo where they planned to camp for the night. Before they had a chance to build a fire, they heard the slow rhythm of approaching hoofbeats. Someone come this way. Yes. Moving along the top of the arroyo just behind that screen of trees. Fire, Silver, steady boy. You not want anyone to see us, son. No, Tonto. It just leads to a lot of questions about my mask. They'll keep quiet until they pass. Tell you, Sam, I'm getting fed up more all the time. Why do we have to take orders from Jackson? Take whatever it feels like giving us instead of fair pay for what we do. Quiet, right, Silver. Steady, boy. We all know the answer to that question, Buck. Any time Jackson wants to, he can throw the tubers in the jail. Yeah, you're right. I'm still fed up with the situation. I'm just about ready to do something about it. Yeah, what are you figuring on doing? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Sam. Your ideas, and I'm going to carry them out if you're willing to help. Take a little plan under the little work. One fellow named Sam, other Bart. Yes, Tonto. Did you hear what they said about a man called Jackson? Ah. Whoever Jackson is, he can put those two men in jail. But him not do it. No. According to the law, that makes him as guilty as they are. Oh, so what we do? I think we'll change our plans about camping here tonight. Throw those two guns back of the saddles. Uh, and where we go? We're going to shove on to the next town. Oh, that near Thunder Martin, huh? Yes, from Clarabelle Hornblow's ranch. You see if either of our friends know anything about this man, Jackson. Oh, are you ready? Uh, be ready. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Clarabelle Hornblow was one of the Lone Ranger's friends. One of the few people on whom he counted for information. 
It was soon after breakfast, and Clarabelle was washing dishes when Thunder Martin returned from town and reined up at the open door. Phew, Thunder! Hmm, that hunk of paper don't look like flour and bacon and beans. Where it is the stuff I sent you to town to get? Uh, I didn't get it. And I'll tell you why. Didn't get it? Why, you over Now, now don't but... get your bristles up, Claire, pal. I... When I give orders, My I... orders be hanged. I'm no run of the mine ranch, hand. I'm only working on your ranch to pay for pasture my mule. Mm, if your mules ate according to the work you do around this place, they'd be darn right sorry-looking critters. Oh. Give me that paper. Let me see what you got there. Yeah, I can tell you what's in it. Uh, and I'll also tell you that you shouldn't go around signing your name to things. What? I, I fall, you haven't Keep headed... still. Let me read this. Forget it. Why, the sheriff told me to bring it to you. It's a notice that says you got to pay Solitary Jackson $2,000 by the first of the month. $2,000? By the first of the month. Dad, Brad and Claire Bell, why'd you borrow money like that? I never did. Now, you needn't try to fib to me. I, I... never fib to no one. I never borrowed $2,000. Your signature says you borrowed it. I saw it on the mortgage you gave Solitary Jackson. Thunder... Where'd you get this paper? Well, I, uh, Jackson brought it into the sheriff's office while I was there, and, and, and he told the sheriff the mortgage was fallen due and he wanted the cash. Now, hold on, Thunder. You're not telling true what? facts. Uh, who's not? Solitary Jackson's been living at the edge of town for a good many years, and he don't show himself but once in a blue moon. Yeah. That's why they call him Solitary. Uh, I know that. Well, he don't like people, and he don't like fresh air, son. Stays in that big closed up house of his like a bear hibernating in winter. Well, he come out today and I seen him. So there. And he says I owed him two thousand dollars. That's that is all woman I know what I'm talking about. I, I know what I see. Mm-hmm. Oh, Clarabelle, you can trust me. Maybe you lost the money gambling or something. Gambling? Why, you spavin' big eared mule face? Where's my broom? Oh, all, all right, right, all right, all right. Now, 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 then you didn't lose it, Gavlin, but you, you borrowed it for something. Eh? And it wasn't good sense to borrow that much on a mortgage. Can't you get it through that thick head of yours that I didn't borrow $2,000? Great day, look who's coming. It's the mass man. Pantano, sakes alive. Build up that fire, Thunder. Build up that fire so we can get some hot breakfast for him. Hi there! Hi! Well, come on in here and let me rustle up some breakfast for you. Good to see you again, Clarabelle. <laughs> you too, Thunder. Uh, Con, you're a sight for sore eyes. Hi there, Tonto. How? Now, <laughs> sit yourselves right down here and I'll bust up a mess of eggs and a skillet of bacon. And stir up that fire, Thunder. You bet. Thanks, Clarabelle. <clears throat> we can do with some breakfast. Ridden all night. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, come at the right time. You know, Clarabelle has got herself in that $2,000 worth of trouble. That's not so. Oh, what kind of trouble, Clarabelle? Oh, this loco galoot has things all mixed up. I, I know what's in that there paper. This is what he's talking about. Oh, may I see it? Yeah. You see, a solitary Jackson claims that Clarabelle owes him $2,000. Jackson? Why'd he say the name like that? Well, uh... Otto and I heard two men talking about someone called Jackson. Men who seemed to be crooks. They came here to see if you knew anyone by that name. You're doggone right, I do. And if he says I owe him $2,000, he's a crook. According to this paper, Clarabelle, you must pay him $2,000 by the first of the month. That should say $200. That's what I borrowed. $200, and I can pay it back to him any time. Two, $200? Yep. Lots of ranchers borrow a little cash from solitary to tide them over until the cattle cash uh, no, comes well, I, in. I, then, by golly, I aim to find out about it. I'm going back to town and talk to you. Well, close that door behind you. We'd like to hear more about this, Clarabelle. Yeah. What do you know about this man, Jackson? Well, no one knows much about him. Lives by himself with nothing but a housekeeper that goes in daytimes. He's always seemed like a good sort. Mm-hmm. Do the people in town think well of him? Sure. Most everyone in town has borrowed a little cash from him time to time to tide him over for a spell. I told you I borrowed $200 from him. But he wants you to pay back 2000 That's what I don't savvy. Now, how about some eggs and bacon? How many can you eat? I think we'll wait until later, Clarabelle. 
Not when I'll go to town and see what happens when Thunder Cold on solitary. Martin reined up in front of the large, gloomy-looking house at the edge of town, where the man named Jackson lived the life of a recluse and earned the nickname Solitary. Solitary! Hey, you, Solitary, open this door. I want to talk to you. Open up, I tell you, before I hammer this door to pieces. Thunder paused, but there was no response to his pounding on the door. He waited a moment, then pounded again, harder than before. You'd better answer the door, Jackson. I don't aim to waste much more time wearing out my knuckles. Now open up, I tell you. The big man tried the door and found it unlocked. It swung inward. Well, doggone. Well, I'm, I'm going to look around in here and find the old cook for myself. And if he's not here, I'll wait till he comes. The place smells like it hadn't had no fresh air in the dog's age. Well, it wouldn't hurt none to open a few shutters on the windows and let a little sun get in. Well, I don't see him in this here room. I... Jumping Juniper. Jackson! Jackson, what's the matter with you? Wake up, Jackson! It's me, Thunder Martin. I got it. The dog gone. Dead. Dead in the doornail. Hey, they're coming with me, Mr. Brady. I ain't never seen them tell the news before. What's going on here? Yeah, Sheriff Brady, come in here. Dog going to look at old Jackson. Well, for goodness, what have you done to Mr. Jackson? Don't make no fast moves, Thunder. Uh, Sheriff, Sheriff, is he hurt bad? Dead. He, he's dead. That's what he is. Why, you murder... Now, now, hold on there. I didn't do it, Brady. You killed Mr. Jackson. You did it. You're the only one around here. But I, How'd I, you get in here? I just walked in. That's the not unlo- true. Mr. Jackson never let the door unlock, not even when he was in the house. Well, it was unlocked when I got here. By the way, Sheriff, what are you doing here? Just came here with me. Come in the back way. Maggie's the housekeeper. She comes every day about this time to clean things up and set up Jackson's dinner. And I come and go over the back door because Mr. Jackson never likes to be disturbed. Brady, if you've got the brains of a tadpole, you'll know I didn't kill Jackson. Why, why would I kill old Solitaire? We'll see about that. Maggie, you go get my deputy. Tell him to come here on the run. Meanwhile, Thunder, I'll take that shooting iron of yours. You're under arrest. Uh, arrest? Go on, Maggie, hurry. Yes, sir, I sure will. Uh, now, listen, Brady. I, I haven't been in this house more than two minutes. That's uh, what you say. For all I know, you could have been here three or four hours. But you can't arrest me without more evidence than that. I said hand over your gun. Come on now, draw it out with your thumb and one finger and draw it slow. Uh, I, don't bother, Thunder. Uh, hey, what's it? Hold it, Sheriff. You better drop your own gun to the floor. Yes, sir, your doggone right, you better. Masks. So, Thunder, you got an outlaw partner. We'll discuss that some other time, Sheriff. Where'd you come from? Through the same door Thunder Martin used a few minutes ago. You've got the drop on me right now, stranger. But that's not the final word. Not by any means. The final word won't be spoken until the man who killed Jackson is found guilty. Out that way, Thunder. Uh, Otto has a horses outside. Well, I, I don't like running out on you, Sheriff, but I'm blamed if I aim to stick around and face a hangman's noose. You leave I... here, it's because you're afraid to stand trial. You'd better look further for the murderer, Sheriff. I'm satisfied I know the murderer as well as the motive. If you think I'd kill a man for $2,000... Don't I... discuss it, Thunder. Come on, Otto's waiting. Go on, Thunder, go on and run. Right. That'll prove your guilt. Then we'll go gunning for you, and I'll order the men to shoot to kill. I'll have a posse on your trail inside of half an hour. Sheriff, it wouldn't be wise to try to get through this door until you're sure we're gone. Oh, doggone. Now I'll sure be charged with that murder. I'm going to find out more about this, Thunder. But 
But first, we've got to get away from here. Hit that tunnel and follow Tom and me. Which way? The woods right over there. Steady, big fella. Easy. You come, Thunder. <coughs> get him up. Get, get up there. Come through there. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. In the shelter of the woods near town, the Lone Ranger reined up and gave instructions to Tonto and Thunder Martin. Oh, 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 oh. I'll stay in hiding until I join you, Thunder. Sheriff Brady is so firmly convinced that you're the one who killed Solitary Jackson. He won't look for evidence pointing to the real murderer. I'll be doggone, I wouldn't kill nobody. Yes, I know that, but Sheriff Brady doesn't. You do what I tell you. But uh, if I'm uh, in hiding, the law will be sure I'm the killer. Never mind that. You do as I say. You show him where to go, Toto. Uh, he show him. You come, Thunder. Oh, all right. I get up there. Get him up. Just come. All right, big fella. Oh, Silver. Tonto took Thunder to a well-concealed camp that had been used on previous occasions. There the two men waited through the long afternoon while a manhunt went on. It was long after dark when they heard the sound of an approaching horse. Someone coming. Oh, it's all right. That horse, Silver. Oh, Silver, oh, he's a silly big fellow. Sit down. Long, long time, King hey, Great day. Where in tarnation have you been? Well, after I left you, I put on a disguise and went back to Jackson's house. Did you learn anything new? Sheriff Brady did just what I thought he'd do. What's that? He was so convinced that you were guilty, Thunder, that he formed a posse and set out to find you. Mm, what you find? Well, I found some tracks, Tonto, and I followed them for quite a distance. And I saw two men approaching, so I ducked off the trail and hid behind a rock. Uh, who'd you see? The men were called Bart and Sam. Bart and Sam? That name's a thousand. Yes, Tonto. The man who rode past the Arroyo last night. What about him? Well, I knew they were returning to town. Yeah. I followed their back trail and learned a few things. Now, Thunder, here's what you're going to do. Yeah. In the morning, you're going to return to town and give yourself up. But, uh, now, hold on. Do Tonto. as I say. We'll give a couple of men, including the sheriff, the biggest surprise they've ever had. After an all-night search, the sheriff's posse returned to town with reports of nothing but failure. It was then that Sheriff Brady and a deputy went to Clarabelle Hornblow's ranch. Ho, 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 ho. Now, by darn. We'll see what Clarabelle has to say. Well, I don't know as we'll get anywhere with it, Sheriff. The downright cantankerous woman to talk to. We'll see. You don't think Thunder would be fool enough to come right back here to the ranch, do you, Sheriff? Brady, look over yonder. See that pasture land? Sure I do. Ends mules that are grazing. Thunder Martin's mules. He thinks more of those homely, long-eared critters than he does of his life. He wouldn't go far for keeps and leave those mules here. Who's there? Open the door, Clarabelle. It's the law. Wait a minute. She's at the door lock. Uh-huh. Well, what do you want here, Sheriff? Clarabelle, I aim to find Thunder Martin. Then you better change your sights. You're aiming in the wrong place. I don't know where that ugly-looking galoot is. Now, but... see here, Let Clarabelle. Let me do the talking, Brady. Well, if you got to talk, you might as well come on in, Sheriff. Clarabelle, we saw Thunder's mules out in the pasture. 
I know how Thunder feels about those mules. He wouldn't go away and leave them, not by a darn sight. Oh, he wouldn't, huh? Well, that's just what he's done. He's left the mules and he's left the chores. He, uh, near wore out from splitting wood and toting water and doing other things that Thunder's always done. I declare I never half appreciated the big overgrowed sidewinder. I'll lay two to one. She knows where he's hiding. He's got to be somewhere around here, Clarabelle. He has, huh? I tell you, Clarabelle, we've looked everywhere else without fine hiding a hair of Thunder Martin. That's why I'm here. Well, you know as much about him as I do. Now go on, Brady. Clear out of my kitchen. I got work to do. You know where he's hiding. Like fun I do. Uh, Clarabelle... Shielding thunder makes you an accessory after the fact. Never mind flaunting your law on me. Clarabelle, one of the men in town thinks it was the Lone Ranger that helped thunder get away. What about it? That makes the Lone Ranger wanted by the law. <laughs> That's a good one. The law wanting the Lone Ranger. Well, what's funny about it? Now, listen to me, Brady. As far as I'm concerned, the Lone Ranger is the law. Stop talking nonsense and go out and look for the critter that really killed Solitary Jackson. The killer's got to have a motive, Clarabelle. Then find a motive. We found one. Well, don't look at me. I know what you're hinting at. Think Thunder killed him because Jackson tried to say I owed him $2,000 when it was only 200 Yes, that's motive enough. No one else had a reason to kill Jackson. And that's where you're wrong. What other reason was it? Who had it? I don't know. But if someone didn't have a reason, Jackson wouldn't be dead. Hey, that's thunder. Thunder, thunder clear out. The sheriff's here. Don't you try to get away. Get covered, thunder. Oh, thunder, And why don't you try to run. Doggone old fool. Oh, now, Clarabelle, don't call me names like that. Huh? Wouldn't you recognize Brady's horse? Sure. Uh, that's why I come here. Huh? What's that? Well, I, I figured you'd want to see me, Brady. You know blame well I want to see you. You knew it when you made your break yesterday. <laughs> Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you take me to jail? That's what we aim to do. Thunder Martin, you mean to say you're giving yourself up without a fight? Oh, I, I reckon they won't string me up without a trial. You'll get your trial all right enough, Martin. You'll get your day in court. That's all I'm asking, Brady. Thunder, what incarnation has come over you? Have you gone soft? Where's the masked man? Why do you let you come here? Now, Clarabelle, there's no use riling yourself over nothing. Come on, Martin. Where's the mask man? Well, he's the one who told me to come in here and surrender. Oh, did I come in here and surrender? He did that? Yep, uh, and he sure wouldn't have done it if he'd thought I was going to get my next stretch. You know the way to town, Martin. Just start that away and we'll be right on your heels. Uh, to the jail. That's huh? right. Now get a move on. <laughs> Thunder went to jail without resistance. Through the barred door, he could see the sheriff sitting at his desk with a couple of deputies lounging nearby. Well, I guess we solved this murder in short order, huh, Sheriff? Sure enough. I always said Thunder would get into trouble someday. Yeah, that's what you said, all right. Where are these two coming in? I don't know who they are. Seen them around town a couple of times. Close the door behind you, sir. Right, Bart. I guess you're Sheriff Brady, huh? That's right. My name's Bart Kessel. Howdy. This is my partner, Sam Webster. Howdy, Sheriff Brady. You two got business here? I guess this is the place to come where Mr. Jackson's heirs. Yeah? We heard he was dead, so he comes straight here. He sent us a letter with this here will, naming us as his heirs in return for some favors we'd done him a long time ago. Uh-huh. I see. He saved his life once. I reckon you found a copy of this will somewhere in Jackson's papers, didn't you, Sheriff? I haven't gone through his private papers yet. If he left a will, the chances are we'll find it. Hey, what? what? The mask man. There you are. I'll go for guns. Gerson, what is this, a stick-up? No, it's no stick-up. Get out of the door, fellow. Uh, he watch it. You're under arrest. You're the one that held Thunder Martin. I'm the one who sent Thunder Martin back here to surrender. Uh, what's more, Sheriff Brady? Thunder, you shut up. I'll tell you who that masked man is. He's the old Hey, Ray. what? Sheriff, it looks like you've got your hands full. Uh, maybe Sam and I had better come back later. Stay where you are. Oh, the door, Toto. Uh, you can't keep us here against our will. Sit down. Mister, I don't care who you are. You aided and abetted the escape of Thunder Martin, making yourself an accessory after the fact. All of which doesn't mean a thing, unless you can prove that Thunder Martin is a murderer. Now do that in court. 
When you go into court, you'll prove that those two men are murderers. Come on, the You can't him. call us murderers. Them spite words. Sit down. Yeah, all right. When I finish talking, if either of you want fighting words, you'll get them. And if you want to fight, you'll be accommodated. You talk like you had plenty to say. Yes, I have, Sheriff. The fact that Jackson kept apart from everyone, including his housekeeper, and had no close friends, made it easy for someone to impersonate him. What? Impersonate him? Three men plotted his capture. Two of the three men sit right there. Bart Kessel and Sam Webster. Oh, she here. You keep quiet. But I won't Go on, mister. Talk some more. Three men plan to get all of Jackson's cash together... Then disappear. But instead, they killed Jackson. Is that it? Yes. The three men were too greedy. They not only wanted all the cash in the house, they also wanted all the money that was owed to Jackson. So they captured him and made him write some letters so they could collect from people who owed him money. But Jackson himself was in my office. He told me personally that he wanted the money Claire Bell owed him. How do you know that man was solitary, Jackson? How do I know? You barely knew the man. Well, he said he was Jackson. There was no reason to doubt it. That man was not Solitary Jackson. Uh, what? His name was Blackie Jackson. He was one of the three who captured Solitary. He took the trouble to grow a heavy beard like Solitary wore. That fooled everyone, including the housekeeper. Hey, Dave, and he must have been the one who was killed. That's right. Well, then where's Solitary? He was in a cave, held prisoner, so he could sign the necessary letters. Well, who killed him? You'll find the footprints of the killers near a window, Sheriff. Footprints of those two. I won't stay here. Let me out. No, you don't. You stop. Oh! You get back, sir. Give me those guns. Here, Sheriff, take this one. Right. And here's the other. Oh, you two crooks are the killers. You can follow their tracks just as I did, Sheriff. To a cave where solitary Jackson was held prisoner. You'll be your best witness against them. I uh, brought him here. Come in here, Jackson. I sure will. I've been waiting for this chance to see these killers get what they deserve. There, there, solitary. Well, that's him. Solitary. Yeah, I'm solitary, all right. Let me out of here, that wretched lady. Unlock this door and let me out. I got business to take care of. I'll hold your horses, Thunder. I'm letting you out. Need that cell for those two killers. Throw in there, Debbie. All right, you heard the sheriff. Get in there, sir. All right. Go on, get right in there. Now, uh, Tom, go on to your high solitary. Where in tarnation did you get the idea of trying to say that Claire Bell owes you $2,000? <laughs> now, now, calm down, Thunder. Calm down, you old cat mount. Calm down, nothing. Listen to me. Those crooks made me sign that paper so they could collect from Claire Bell. I signed it for ten times what she owed me because I knew you'd raise a howl and start things going. I figured you might keep them going until the truth come out and I was rescued. So that's it. Of course it is. And as for the 200, you can tell Clarabelle that it's paid in full. I owe you plenty for rescue. I, 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 you don't owe me a dime. All you owe is owed to that mass man. That you... Hey, I come back here a minute. We'll go and tell Clarabelle that you're out of jail, Thunder. You'll be waiting for the news. Oh, and Thunder, uh, uh, who is that mass man? Uh, that man? Uh, he's my friend. He's the Lone Ranger.
story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.